man. So, what y'all think about the whole big baller brand thing? I ordered, listen, I'm LeVar. I ordered my big baller stuff in like May. <laughs> no, no, actually, it wasn't May. I, I got correct myself. I ordered my big baller stuff in like July. Bro, it's a whole new year. Where my stuff at, man? I need that. I support it. I like it. I like I like what he's doing. It's unconventional. I mean, he say some wild stuff, but he different. You know what I'm saying? I like. I, I mean, I I like what he what he doing in terms of the brand. You know what I'm saying? But you know, and I understand how some people saying he like exploiting. I mean, it may look like he's exploiting his kids. I, but they don't have a problem with him as a father. And that's what's baffling everybody. Like, they support him 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like, my thing was, like, from the beginning, I was like, I'm laughing. I still laugh. When I see him on TV, it's entertainment. But it's good for his brand and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, you know, a black father in L.A. got three kids, UCLA scholarships, even though, you know, Mellow and, and Jello, what they call them? Mellow and Jello, they didn't go. You know, they went overseas, but... I mean, he's off the grid. Like it's different stuff, but they make they 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 must be doing well with the brand for this to be. You know, it must be lucrative. You know what I'm saying? But I like that he did. I like that he got his three sons in, in one of the most prestigious schools in the world. You know what I'm saying? That's that's cool to me. You know, scholarships. They love basketball. They work hard, and then he built the brand off of it and said, "I don't have to do it your way. I can do it my way." It's just that, and when you people are gonna say you're crazy when you do that, but Something must be making sense for them. The Lithuania thing, I think stuff is global right now. You saw the reception they got when they pulled up. I don't know. I mean, I think it's something that, you know, they feel like it's, you know, they can keep it going. Long, long. But I need my gear, bro. I ordered them shoes. I ordered, like, two hoodies. Like, come on, come on, ball. What's up, baby? Jay, I need my stuff, man. <laughs> I'm trying to wear it. It's all good. Just give me a tracker number, and that's all I need. I, mean, I swear to God, you give me a tracker number. I'm FedEx or UPS? I'm checking my one, checking man. my Gmail every day to see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Man, I'm rocking with the balls, man. I like, what, like I told you earlier, I like what the what the dad doing. He he don't. I don't think he's the best at vocalizing certain opinions or thoughts, but I think he's smart and strategic with what he's doing. I ain't, I don't have no complaint, man. I said from day one, I told him, yo. Yeah, he, JC oh, was behind. Man, I'm, I'm rocking. I was behind from like day one. The yeah. first I ever heard of, like his voice of like just being out there talking about his sons. I was like, I'm rocking with him. Cause everybody was relating. Like you gonna correlate how Lonzo plays with his dad and, and the brand and all that stuff. Like I thought it was genius that he made. He put the show on Facebook. They the TV show on Facebook. Versus TV, you know, and I think his brother had a lot to do with that. But I thought that was, I thought that was smart, you know what I'm saying? But I think, you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, I don't think at this point it even matters how Lonzo no. plays. I don't think I, I like Lonzo's game. I like, I like how he plays. He's a culture changer. But everybody, when you, the average fan is like, he better be Michael Jordan when he walk on that court, or we killing him. Yeah. And we killing you, and we killing the brand. And, it's like you love him or you hate him, but either way, you polarize him, you don't talk about him. You know what I'm saying? What you think of, oh, my Not good. I'm going to say, what you think about the, the one reason that I supported it, for one, we was talking about this in the car. I think this outlandish thing he said is a great marketing tool. Yeah. Because he getting free, um, pretty much uh, free publicity when you go on first take and all this yeah. and that. But also, too, man, I just think. And we talked about this too, you even mentioned this too, but what do y'all think about anytime you have like a black father being an intricate part of, of their child's life and just following them, supporting them, it, they always make it seem like, they demonize them in a sense, make it seem like it's something bad. Do, don't do talk about it or something. No, yeah. no, but when they do talk about it, it's like all from a negative aspect. Like, for one, the market, I, I think his... I think his pops being way he knew that was gonna come. I don't think that surprised him. All of them free did. marketing. Yeah. But I for like we talked about this like the stigma on like black fathers is either they in jail or they just not there with their kids. So like and the media plays off that yeah. that narrative more than the fathers who are there. So 
So when they see a guy like LeVar Ball that's in the house with their kids, raising them, teaching them the right principles of life, character traits, they look for anything to try to pick them apart because they're like, well, this is different from the narrative we've been pitching for all these years. So, like, I respect it. Like, man, he might be kind of outlandish with, like, his thoughts and, and his logic, but as far as, like, how he raises kids, his presence, how he's been there from day one, like, you can tell just from being on camera that his kids, like, respect him. And he's, like, the father figure. He's been there from day one. Yeah. So, like, to see that, I felt like the media should be, like, Shining a greater light on that than versus like him saying that he can beat Michael Jordan one on one, which is funny. Everybody know he can it's beat MJ one on one. It's entertainment, but nobody's talking about like man. He's been like a positive influence on his three sons' lives from day one. His kids ain't never been in no trouble outside of like the incidents where his son was allegedly stealing. Shades when they were in China, I think it was. Allegedly, did. allegedly. I mean, well, <laughs> outside of that, like growing up, like you know what I'm saying, like Lavar did a great job, and he's still in their lives. Nobody's talking about that. Yeah. And from day one, I was like, man, that's to me that was the biggest thing, like how me, like, because if you see a black father that gets arrested or, or makes it on TV, and he got like three kids by two or three different women and he's not in any of their lives, the media gonna hype that up like crazy and they gonna keep talking about that aspect. Yeah. But like I I mean just to piggyback on what he's saying, like how many movies do we see where the father not doing what he's supposed to be doing? Or how many shows do we see where that happens? You know what I'm saying? Nowadays we have like shows that really depicted black fathers in a positive light back in the day. We got like blackish now. We ain't, it ain't a lot of that on TV no more. You see what I'm saying? So, TV is the media. Everybody watches TV. Everybody, you know, if a show gets any kind of publicity, we don't, we don't really see that. They they don't really talk about that narrative. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what, like, I, I respect that he's doing something for his kids that's off the grid, but it's going to work. At the end of the day, like, we can't lose. Lonzo's number two pick. He's going to be, he's going to have a long career. You know what I'm saying? And then the other two boys, they part of the brand as well. They got, well, one of them got a real chance of making the NBA, LaMelo. And they're going to make a lot of money playing basketball. They're gonna, but they gonna, I think they're going to make even more money with the brand in terms of the other two. You know, Lonzo going to be straight. So I just think that's what it is. But nobody nobody repeats or talks about the narrative in terms of, you know, black fathers. We don't really see that in the media as much as we used to. So, you know? so what do you think it'll take for the narrative to change, man. Me, I mean, I think I think it's changing. Like I, I know a lot of dudes that take care of their kids. They in their kids' lives. They they making sure that they their families are straight. Even if you have a child with a woman that you're not with no more, making sure they straight. But I, I don't. I I mean, I don't think we need to worry about people looking at it. Just do it. Just take care of your business. It ain't about who see it. it ain't about the media putting a light on it, whatever like that. Just do it in real life. We don't need TV shows to reinforce that we need to take care of our kids and our families. We don't need that. Yeah, talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, just do it. Like, like that's that's the whole thing. Like, everybody, like, 2018, I saw somebody post 20, 2017 leaving alone, uh, baby daddies and people not taking care of their kids. 2018, we getting husbands. I'm like, why you wasn't doing that then? So what's going to be in 2019? Same like, thing. yeah, I'm like, and dudes posting stuff like that too. Like, blah, blah. I'm like, look, man, just do it. I don't want to see this post. I hate them posts. Just do it. We don't need to see that you're going to do it. If you said you're going to do it, then just tell yourself you're going to do it and do it. It ain't like your son going to see that or your daughter going to see be like, dad finna get right in 2018. Like, that's stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, just do it, bro. Like, it's, it's real life. We don't need to. That's the media and social media really like making people feel like they got to say that. And to me, that's a, that's a sign of insecurity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thank God I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't grow up in this era of social media really running people's lives, grown-ups, not just kids, you know? So that's how I feel about it. That's true, though. It's crazy. Social media, it runs the world. I mean, think about everything that is dictated or influenced by social media. Tell me something that's not right now. 
Oh. I can't really think of any. I'm sure it might be a few, but I can't really think of any right now. And so, like, when you look at, like, how many people are locked into social media, and you just think about how all the different aspects of everybody's lives is, like, affected by social media or controlled by social media, for that, for better words. Nobody can do nothing without social media. You look at it like the ma the major news platform. When I saw major news platforms and like other media platforms that's like national, like global, starting to come to Twitter and Instagram with ads, that's when I knew. I was yeah. like, oh, this is different now. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a whole nother ball game, and people getting rich off Instagram and Twitter, and we glorifying them, and they getting deals and money. Which is cool. I, I mean, if you you can take care of your family, I appreciate that legally and everything straight. I, I I can appreciate that. But now we got people out here trying to copycat and they doing stupid shit just to get known and yeah. put on. And then I want to do this and then I'm I'm gonna just do something stupid to get views and likes and all that. Like it's a platform. Use it for something that you really want to do. Don't let it run your life. Run it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. True. Real. You pulled? Oh, I thought you made it. You average twenty nine. Oh, we're number watching, seven in the country. Yeah, we watching watching West Virginia versus uh, Oklahoma. Trey Young, the young fella Trey Young, shot the young fella Trey Young, and that boy Javon Carter is nice too. That's the point guard from um, West, West Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, so let's talk about social media a little more, then, man. So, mm -hmm. do you think that? I mean, everything it, you can find a good and a bad in everything. But do you think with the platform of social media that that kind of takes away? Like you was talking about how people, you know, they they being copycats and doing anything for attention. Do you think social media just enables people to just be ignorant sometimes? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like people, people doing stuff just to get. It's like not even about trying to get. Like okay, I want to do this to put this out. I want to start a business, or I want to, I want to promote my brand. I promote a product that I feel like I like and uh, something that I create. You know what I mean? It's it's like it's not. It went from that. It went from just posting pictures of you and your friends. To like, okay, let me try to promote something. To like, okay, such and such, it went viral. Let me just go viral right. any way I can. You know what I'm saying? When I'm like, that's not what this ain't what this not what that was supposed to be created for. But people saying they can make money off people that's that's higher up. They doing that now. It was like they promoting it. Yeah, do something stupid so we get more views and our our site will be popping more, have more attention than the next site. So it's it's almost like it's getting condoned until people start going to jail and stuff start happening. People get you know what I mean, God forbid, hurt and murdered and stuff like that. And and you you know, you go on CNN and they got Facebook live feed of what happened to somebody. Right. That's when you know, like, come on man, it's, it's something bigger than just like what what's going on now. You know? So do you think social media do you think it make more people want attention to become attention seekers, or do you think people have always wanted attention, but here's a way to garner that attention that they they've always been seeking? I think it's both. It's people that wanted attention that some of them, like some of these people, have been funny, but they would have never had a chance to do stand up or something like that, or be able to have an opportunity or the platform to be funny. A lot of a lot of those guys, they get movie roles, guys and girls get movie roles. They get like record deals, and that's that's cool to me. That's like I said, that's cool. But when you just doing stupid stuff to go viral, that's different. And it's a it's a fine line, and it's it's not that that's not the same thing. You know, using your platform is important. It's very important, and and, and if you, they give this platform to you, so how are we gonna use it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a dream, or you got something you want to do, or you got something that you're interested in. First of all, you can self-educate yourself on it and then learn how to brand yourself. A lot of people don't even, I mean, some people, they, they, they haven't been to college or don't have to go to school and try to figure stuff out. They can just basically use Instagram and what they learn from just research. 
But if you just want to go viral and do stupid stuff, my advice to you is like, just don't go to jail. Yeah. And don't get killed or something like that. You know what I mean? Because it's a lot of that stuff going on. And it's like almost part of like the culture right now. And that's kind of what's sad. popping. Yeah, which is sad. sad. That's stupid. Because you stupid see people, shit. like you said, it's people really making money off of it. And there's really no guidelines or like restrictions on like what you can and can't do. People replacing yeah. money for likes and retweets and views. You replacing your self-respect, your integrity, everything, man. and money, all that stuff for like likes, views, and retweets. When it can happen, it like it, it happened, you pop it for a couple like a week, maybe, two weeks, maybe a month, if you really popular. And you got all that platform and attention on you, and you don't do nothing with it. You don't do shit with it. Like what what like what you gonna do now? Like now it's time to come in with the with the positive stuff. Like yo, I'm trying to do this. I really? Think this is, yeah. Now you got the businesses already. You got people looking at you already that want to be a part of your brand or a part of what you got going on, and then you don't do nothing with it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta take advantage of it because right now, I mean, the, the world moving real fast. Like, yeah. and social media has it moving even faster. Man, I, I know it was crazy because, like you said, man, you will see someone getting stabbed up. Like I seen a video, Joe was just getting stabbed up or whatever. People just sitting there recording it. So, and then you see, you know, all these people recording dead bodies in the street or whatever, man. It's almost mm -hmm. like that just take your human side out of it, man. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's true. It's like That's when true. you when you see a lot of stuff, man. You be, you become kind of like conditioned, to be like yo, this is just normal. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was I was thinking that like with the police killers and stuff like that. I was thinking that like I was like all of a sudden every month or every other month it's a police shooting, man unarmed, whatever the case may be. And I'm like that's messed up. But then I'm like, yo, this is like the fourth or fifth or sixth time we seeing this, and it's like going to court. It's getting a lot of publicity. Like a lot of these, a lot of these stations are getting a lot. They like the ratings going up, and I'm like, people making money off this stuff. Somebody lost a child, but people making money. That's how they looking at. It. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, somebody lost a child, or a man just got taken away from his family and his children and his wife. And I'm like, that's not really the narrative now. Now the narrative is they going to court. Let's see what happens. Let's see if the cop get off. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, we seeing this shit every other month. Like when it was really going on, like, I'm like, it's been going on. It's just, it wasn't no social media. So now we got social media, it's happening. And now the whole narrative is, look, it's happening again on camera and he gonna get off. So how many times can we put that on our station and get hits and likes and all that kind of stuff? So it's, it's a it's an uprage, it's an uproar and it's outrage and, and, I, and it should be. Cause I mean, I, I'm outraged with that too as well, but I'm like, Y'all gotta think, it's bigger than just that. People making money off these stories. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then at the same time, you got kids with phones that's seeing this happen every other month. And now you're just thinking like, dang, cuz got killed in Missouri. Homie got killed in Charlotte. And now it's just like, they go from like, I can't believe this to like, dang, that's messed up to like, dang, bro, they did it in to like, that's just how it is. You see what I'm saying? They conditioning people, the kid like the kids have the phones now. Like it's not like a kid gotta wait till he's thirteen to get a phone. If you don't have a phone and you thirteen, you gonna see it on your on your friends' phones at school nowadays. Even when you ten, you know what I'm saying? Eleven, twelve years old. So that's that's a that's a good point. Like you gotta like I mean, and that that just I think don't that that stems to you know just like making sure you talk to your kids that look this ain't normal. This is not supposed to happen. That's inhumane right there. 